Iran can never have nuclear weapons. That, from Washington, is the bottom line. And a further warning, just because Donald Trump chose not to launch airstrikes against Iran doesn't mean he's taking the drone incident lightly. Neither Iran nor any other hostile actor should mistake U.S. prudence and discretion for weakness. After all, the U.S. did retaliate. It launched cyber strikes reportedly against Iranian missile control systems and an intelligence unit. From Trump, it's the carrot and the stick. On one hand, announcing more sanctions against Iran. On the other, saying that if the country gives up nuclear weapons... We'll call it, let's make Iran great again. Does that make sense? In an interview that aired today, Trump said he would agree to talks without preconditions. I'm not looking for war. And if there is, it'll be obliteration like you've never seen before. But I'm not looking to do that. But you can't have a nuclear weapon. Iran says it won't go back to the negotiating table under pressure, which has been building since the Trump administration pulled the U.S. out of the international agreement signed in 2015 to contain Iran's nuclear ambitions. That led to the rapid tightening of U.S. sanctions against Iran. In response, Iran has been building up stocks of enriched uranium. The country is set to violate the nuclear agreement in a matter of days. And today, Iran's deputy foreign minister announced that decision would be irreversible. A senior Iranian military commander also warned any conflict in the Gulf region could spread uncontrollably. As if to underscore that point, today Iran-backed rebels in Yemen claimed responsibility for attacking a Saudi airport with a drone, reportedly killing one person and injuring seven. And I think both sides, uh, for the moment, are escalating, but escalating with prudence. Now, war is a, a tricky thing, military action is a tricky thing, and, and things could spiral out of control pretty quickly if uh, there is uh, a misjudgment somewhere along the way. So Some the doubt Trump's judgment, saying the mixed messages are confusing enemies and allies alike, while Trump's supporters say his aim is clear, to make Iran great again, but only on America's terms. Kim Brunhuber, CBC News, Los Angeles. Now, the Trump administration says it plans to announce new sanctions against Iran tomorrow, but Iran has its own ways of causing pain to the U.S. or its allies without triggering full-scale retaliation. Iran has built a chain of well-armed allies stretching all the way to the Mediterranean, which it uses to challenge the U.S. and its friends. The drone attack today on the Saudi airport followed another airport attack earlier this month, also claimed by Iranian-backed rebels in Yemen. Last February, Israel shot down what it claimed was an armed Iranian drone sent from Syria. Also a threat for Israel, Hezbollah, an Iran-backed militia that holds serious sway in Lebanon. Finally, there's the Strait of Hormuz. That's where six tankers have been attacked, including two just 10 days ago, adding, of course, to the recent tensions. One-fifth of the world's oil ships through here, so any serious disruption will take a heavy toll on gas prices, even here in Canada. For some Canadians, the impact of these tensions runs far deeper. There are more than 170,000 Canadians with roots in Iran. Briar Stewart spoke with some of them in Vancouver today. And now we are in a shaky situation. Inside K. Ismailipur's home, he's scouring media reports. Like so many others, he's watching with concern as tensions escalate between the U.S. and Iran, a country he left more than 15 years ago. My Families, my people in Iran are wishing to have a, a sustainable democracy and peace. They chanted death to America. Death. He says Iranians have been living with the prospect of war against the U.S. for decades. Says the current crisis is deeply rooted in regional conflict, so this goes much further than relations between Iran and the U.S. All of the stakeholders should uh, get on the board and talk and solve the problem. So I keep telling my friends that if war happens, I probably would go back to my country. I think it's almost impossible to sit here at peace. Golsa Golistane is a student at Simon Fraser University and has organized rallies in Vancouver to support the people of Iran. The sanctions situation is just so backbreaking that people are more focused on surviving the day-to-day -day life rather than 
what's going on with the politics of war because they're like, oh, we, like they're not sure if it's going to happen. And with President Trump promising more sanctions against Iran, daily life could get harder. Young generation, they believe there is no future for them. Ebi Mosani hosts a Persian radio show in Vancouver and says Iranians back home are concerned for their safety, but some are hopeful that U.S. involvement could lead to a regime change. Some people, they believe that this is the answer to get rid of the dictatorship. Ask another dictator to get rid of this one, bullying each other, what, what they're doing right now. But war is war. Which is why so many Iranians are anxious over just what might come next. Briar Stewart, CBC News, Vancouver.